the reason I'm here is because my therapist said it would be good for my self-esteem to talk to large groups of people. So in order to reinforce that, can we all start off with a really big round of applause, because that helps me feel good about myself. Even if you're insincere, it's fine. Okay, so let's start with a big round of applause. There really is no need to clap, but thank you very, very much anyway. So, why are we here today? Well, firstly, I need to say a very big thank you to BenQ, X-Rite, Expo Imaging, and Rotolite. I'm actually a brand ambassador for three of these four products. Okay, so this is just my sort of housekeeping. They, to they told me to do this. I've done that. Now I can I move on. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Adrian Weinbrecht. I have a background as a photographer. These days I describe myself as a visual uh, content creator because I work in video and in stills. Today though, when I'm speaking to you all now, I'm going to concentrate on stills, okay? I love questions, okay? So feel free at any point in time to put your hand up and ask any question about anything whatsoever and if I don't know the answer, I will make something up that will sound incredibly plausible. Okay? So my name's a bit of a mouthful. That's because my dad's German and my mum's Australian. This makes me sort of half laid, sort of half Australian, half German, so I'm sort of laid back and uptight. Okay? It sort of works quite well. But anyway, it's a big mouthful. So recently I've rebranded simply to AWP. Okay? And my job today is to talk about small kit with big results, okay? I'm fortunate enough that normally when I'm filming, I usually have one or two assistants with me. I would typically have a, a crew, which will be gaffers and other bits and pieces that are gonna be helping managing lights and odds and ends. But it's amazing what you can achieve with very, very small systems. And if I was starting all over again and I was doing a lot of solo work and things like that, this is the type of configuration I'd be running with. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? No? So I'll just talk a little bit about my background in terms of as a commercial stills photographer. I've shot all over the world from Australia, Hong Kong, Indonesia, to the United States, uh, right throughout Europe from, from Italy to Denmark. Um, I've been really, really fortunate in my career uh, thus far. Part of being fortunate has come about through, I think, almost a philosophical approach. And something that I feel is really, really important is the client experience. Just out of the people that are here, put your hand up if you're already a working professional. Okay, you make your living doing photography. That's a bit intimidating for me, actually. That's a bit scary. That's fine. Okay, put your hand up if you'd like to be a working professional. Okay, great. Okay, and if you're a keen amateur. Yeah, I kind of belong to all those categories, I think, actually, because I'm still really enthusiastic about pictures. Very, very enthusiastic about it. So let's look at client experience. I know you've come for a particular thing, but I think it's important that we start off with almost a philosophical approach. The client experience is as important as the outcome. So the thing for me is I... Can you guys read that? Does that make sense? Okay. There's nothing worse than a photographer saying to a subject, smile. <laughs> it's horrible. It's really, really cringy. Make a joke. Do something silly. You know, be self-effacing. Just whatever it is that you have to do. Get a response. Get a real response. Okay. This is a real laugh and it feels like a real laugh. And then that means that, you know, I'm, I'm unashamedly, unabashedly commercial in my approach. Okay, so I've, as you saw earlier, I've shot campaigns all over the world, and if I can elicit real emotion and a real response from someone, whether they're a celebrity, or a model, or just a regular person, it makes my image that much stronger. I've done quite a lot of men's fashion over the years. I was fortunate enough recently to be invited onto Britain's Next Top Model as a guest photographer. And this is some of the images that were shot. Um, these are cinemagraphs, so they're, they're a hybrid of a moving image and a still image. Okay, pretty effective sort of thing. Um, this was 
fun. What's interesting about these shots as well is they were all shot uh, in a forest near a castle on a crappy, crappy day. Okay? And my brief was have a sort of forest scene. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And then when the client arrived, French client, they said, oh, we wanted to look like the Mediterranean. And I was just like, hang on a sec. It was overcast like today. Not, not dissimilar today, but a bit of rain and a bit of drizzle. And we were able to create an atmosphere that was very, very different from the environment that we had. And that's why I get called in to do these sort of jobs, because I'm able to create a feeling and a sense of something. This is actually is shot outside in amongst some trees. Okay? The white is I just got one of my scrims and just push light back through that. So it has a kind of almost studio-esque feel, but it's actually outside in a field. Also, if people aren't asking any questions, I'm going to assume you can all do exactly what I can do. So I'll start asking you buggers questions. Okay, can I say bugger? Yes? yes? Great. It's a great word. Silly bugger, dumb bugger, fat bugger, skinny bugger. I love, I love the word. So I've shot lots of celebrities, did a lot of this as stills. Put your hand up if you like seeing behind the scenes of an image. I love seeing behind the scenes of an image. This is, I've got a small studio in my home in uh, northwest London, and it's great for doing the sort of portrait stuff. These are three of the finest tailors on Savile Row. Really great bunch of guys. They've made me some really lovely suits over the years, um, and they're just fantastic to work with. Now. I like people, so that's what I concentrate on photographing. If you like cars, I suggest you concentrate on that. If you like cats, concentrate on that. Landscape, etc., etc. This is not a regular job, okay? Those of us that are pursuing this as a job are doing so because we have a passion, okay? And I've been doing pictures for over 25 years. I know you're thinking, hang on a sec, you started at three. I'm actually quite a bit older than that. And I'm still as enthusiastic, and I still get as excited today as I did way back. The other thing as well, the lot of the pictures I'm showing you, there's no retouching. A lot of this stuff is straight out of camera. Okay? It's because I grew up shooting film, I learned the craft of photography, and I learned to get it right in camera. This was a magazine cover. Um, I believe it was the first cover they ever had that was never retouched for this particular magazine. So the question is, what do you like? Even better, what do you love? A little hobby of mine is to shoot dance. This is from my first dance shoot I ever did. The lady's name is Kathy Marsden. She's a brilliant choreographer. At the time, she was just about to leave the Royal Ballet. Quick question. How many lights have we used to create this image? Come on. Three, one, one, three. Do I hear an advance on three? Three going once. Three going twice. Three, two, one, one. One, one, one. That's three. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's one light. It's one light up above the subject. Okay. That's all it is. One strip light. Okay. It, there's a simplicity. It's, you know, it, all too often when people are starting out, they tend to just pile in lights, thinking they're going to get some sort of amazing result. Whereas if you just step back and you just think a little bit about what it is that you're doing. Same thing. Very, very simple. Uh, this was an interesting thing. This was with the Bern Ballet in Switzerland. Because I went to Switzerland um, because Kathy Marsden, that dancer you saw, ab about uh, 18 months later, she became the creative director of the Bern Ballet in Switzerland. I used to live in Switzerland before I was living in this country. And she invited me to Switzerland to shoot the dancers. I went and shot a number of backgrounds and with a view to going back and taking the dancers to these different locations. The only thing is when I came back, the weather was really, really horrible. So what I then did was shoot the dancers, the people you see here, in the studio, and then we comp them together. Okay? So I'm not against retouching and comping and doing things, but I do it in order to achieve something I couldn't achieve otherwise. Okay? I do it in order to take the photography to another level. Oh, sorry, I don't do questions. All right. um, 
Yeah, no, go on. For the comps, the question is, did I shoot the background first or did I shoot the people first? Who thinks I shot the background first? Great, because that's actually what I said. You should have been listening. Were you on your phone texting or something? Okay. Okay, that's your first chance. Right. No, that's fine. No, no. So I shot the backgrounds first. Why would it be important to shoot the backgrounds before you shoot the subjects? Can anybody tell me that? So you can... Half right. So you know where to put the lights. You need to see the nature and quality of what's going on so you can then light accordingly. Okay? I was only joking about that. You've got one more chance. Okay. How many images have we comped together here? Well, you can count. Come on. I don't want to hear everyone separate. That's not a number. One, two, three, four, everyone separate. Sorry? Three. You've got a good voice. Three. Anybody else? One. Anybody else? I'm in the way. Sorry. 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 Three. One. Five we've had. Anybody else? No. This is one image. Okay? It's just one shot. It's one shot. It's one image. Just lined the dancers up and said, one, two, three, jump. One, two, three, jump. Click. I think I did about 10 frames. And then we got this. You know. I mean, he got a broken arm. Her leg was... Yeah, but anyway. So this is, this is one of my passions. This is not how I make a living, but this is one of my passions. I do this. This is what I'm saying about you know, who's a hobbyist, who, who would like to be... You know, this is what I do. This is where I almost consider it a hobby because this is where it's fun. But it can lead to work as well, and it has done. But that's not the primary motivation. So there's something else that I love, and I mean really, really love. You know, and and I, and when I when I say love and I say it moves me, I'm talking about there's my kids and my wife. There's this other thing. Okay, this is a really strong feeling that I have, and I've had for ever since I can remember actually. So every image I've shown has one thing in common. No, it's not bare-chested men. Any idea what the one consistent thing right from the very first slide I've shown now might be? Trying to tell a story with a photo. Partly, yes. But there's something even bigger than that. Something that is critical and crucial. Good lighting. Good answer. Every image has had light in common. And it's very generous of this man to say, good light in common. Okay, that's very kind of you. Thank you, sir. And it is about light. Because light is the image. No light, no image. So there are three properties of light. Can we have some guesses, please? What the three prof properties of light might be? Yeah, color is one. What? What's that mean? That's just light, though. That's not a quality, that's just light. That's ambient light. Shadow, intensity. We're getting some good answers. We're getting some really good answers. And one or two might be right. Okay. I break it down into three core things, and I actually have an order to it in terms of how I think about it. Okay. So, the first one. What's my first one? Anyone want to have a guess? That's my first one. Hang on, some, hang on. who just said intensity? Bang. Which I prefer to call quantity, because I'm simple. Intensity's got too many syllables for me. Okay. It's quantity. If you look at this image, it's mostly shadow, but it's a strong image. But there's very, very little light. It's very, very subtle. Okay? It's literally just kissed with a bit of light. Okay? 
Uh, this would have been one, two, probably three lights on this. Yeah, I'd say. So most of the shadows in f most of the faces in shadow. Okay, because sometimes less is more, and I think this is a really great example of that. What's our second one? So we've got quantity. What's going to be number two? Color balance, position, temperature. These are great answers. I'm getting a lot from the left side. I need a bit more from this side, okay? How you might, yeah, it's not bad. Okay, for me, the second one is quality. It's the quality of the light. When you're talking about ambient light, ambient light has a particular quality depending on the characteristics outside. But also, ambient light is simply the light that surrounds us. Ambient light can be from tungsten light, it could be from daylight. It's just the light that is all around us. So quality is really, really important. Beautiful light. It's going to be a beautiful image. Imagine if I had a good-looking model for this shot. How good would this have been then? Okay. Oh, God, it's you. Sorry. <laughs> so what's my third one? We've got quantity. We've got quality. What's going to be my third property of light? Uh, that's possibly quality. Oh, you're confusing me now. Okay, gentleman said flash duration. Well, you're not always shooting stuff with flash. Anybody else? Okay. Sorry? Quantity, we started with quantity. Okay, so this is a good clue. This is a really good clue. Boom, color. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Clap, clap, color. It's color. Okay. That wasn't a round of applause. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, please, 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 please clap. It's really, really important. What's your name? Is it color? Rob. Okay, that was good, Rob. It's color. Okay? Color separates your subject from the background. Color reinforces the message that you set by your light. Okay? Your light reveals the form of the subject and it sets the mood, and that is then reinforced by color. Does that make sense? Yeah? I mean, if you look at, this is exactly the same shot. But they feel very, very different. And all it is, is we've got a warm image on the left, and a cold image on the right, or a yellow image and a blue image, however you want to sort of perceive that. It's exactly the same shot, but it evokes very, very different feelings. Okay? It's so important. So here we go. Quantity, quality, color. Okay? That's the three properties of light that are crucial. Because light as you can see in this behind-the-scenes shot, this is what our eye sees, okay? And this is where flash is actually quite amazing. Is it a no, that's a great question. Is anyone else confused by the definition quality of light? Put your hand up if you're not sure what, that, what I mean when I say quality of light. This is great. I love these questions, okay? If I was sitting in the audience, I'd be asking questions all the time. I'd be super annoying, okay? Quality of light means, is the light hard? Is the light soft? Is the light flat? Is it coming from the side? Is it coming from behind? That's the quality of the light, okay? And when I say quality, it's not about, um, it's more expensive. I'm not talking about that at all, okay? I'm talking about the nature, the characteristic of the light, okay? Does that, does that help? Yeah. Does that help with everybody else in terms of the definition of, of quality of light? So, light is truly transformative. This was something I did a few years back for Converse. That's straight out of camera. Now, I still get blown away by this. That's because the flash is so much stronger than the ambient light. This is what we capture in camera. Okay? But, but this is what our eye sees. Yeah, I use quite a big flash. That's quite a big flash up there, and then we've got, yeah, I mean, stuff, yeah, 
that, that's it's quite a big sort of setup. We're going to be using small setup today to show what you can achieve with that. But yeah, that is quite a yeah. It's a yeah. It's a, it's in a studio, but there's a lot of daylight in that studio. It's full of daylight because the skylight's all the way through. But you bash it with a bit of flash, and you end up with something that looks and feels very very different. Okay. I still get excited by this. Okay. I still get really excited by light. Recent campaign that I did um, last year, crappy, crappy winter's day. We stuck a light outside, flashed it. Suddenly we've got, you know, maybe a spring feeling or, you know, could be summer, that sort of thing. But you transform the scene with the light. Oh, I used a really good light outside. Yeah. Now the question is, what light did I use outside? Um, when I shot this, I had um, Ellen Crumb uh, Ranger set outside. They're sort of a thousand watt second light. Stuck it outside bare head because I wanted it to have the quality of sunlight. So I needed the quality of the light to be quite hard. Okay. And then that just came through. Behind where the camera was, it was kind of creamy colored walls. So that was going to give me enough fill. And we're done. And I didn't mind... I'm selling the relationship with these two, okay? I don't care that I don't have any detail back there. I don't care about that. I'm not selling door frames or glass or anything like that. I'm, I'm selling this feeling, okay? So that's, that's how it was lit. Very, very simple stuff. This was interesting, actually. This was a rebrand for the BBC. Now, I won't mention the agency that was heading up this rebrand for Radio 3. But my brief was, under no circumstances are to use any flash. That's what I was told. And the agency didn't want to use me, but the BBC wanted to use me because I'd worked with a lot of their artists before and they trusted me and they liked me. Okay? And then the agency was like, no, 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 this guy, you, you can see he just overlights stuff and it, it looks like it's too lit and we don't want that. And they're going, no, no, Adrian can do it. And they started off with somebody else, but um, that person wasn't very good. So then they called me in and I ended up doing the whole shoot. What was funny about this is we lit every shot with flash because in this beautiful country, as you can see today, as we're approaching summer, we can't always be guaranteed of sunshine. So you learn to create sunshine. And what makes me giggle to this day is when the Beeb were presenting to the creative director that said, don't use Adrian, and under no circumstances, whoever shoots it cannot use flash. He went, see, look how great natural light can be. And he was so wrong. But you get a few plonkers in agency world. That's just how it goes. Anyone from an agency here, actually? So <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. The, the the thing the thing is, there's opportunity in this country to use flash because you know you've got you've got God's beautiful softbox out there. <laughs> okay, so you can then start to shape and create and craft. And yeah, it would be horrible to be in Australia where the light's just beautiful anyway. <laughs> you wouldn't want to have that. <laughs> It is, well, it presents its own com complexities as well. But no, no, it, it, it does present a lot of opportunities because you're not fighting against it. You know, if we're, if we're filming in Australia and it's summer, we literally have an hour, hour and a half at either end of the day where we can actually film outside before we have to start putting scrims over the top of our subject. Okay? It's a very, very different nature and characteristics. Very similar thing in Spain as well if we're filming down there. So it's just a few campaigns that we've done. Now, what's interesting where before we're talking about quality and we were talking about color of light, this is completely artificially lit. I'm actually selling underfloor heating. Okay, that's what this campaign was about. But if you look at the light that's going over the dog, over the girl, over the floor, it's soft, it's warm, because it's underfloor heating, so we've, we've, we've colored it warm. There's enough shape in it. In other words, there's some highlights through here. So we've got some form, okay, from the light. But it's, they're not blowing out. It's still soft and it's gentle. Be like the dog. It's soft and gentle. 
and it conveys the feeling and the message that we needed and wanted for the brand. This was shot with flash. Okay. So, moving on, this is a fairly typical set for me. Okay. I like to work in, you know, with the minimum minimal amount of kit. Okay. So this was a campaign I shot uh, last year um, for a new betting company. It was a really great campaign. It was very successful. Um, it all went really, really, really well. And I think what the goal today is to just show you what you can achieve with relatively simple things. Okay. This this stuff is actually very, very cool that we're going to be playing with now and we'll do a live feed up into the screen. Um, but I just wanted to sort of show you that because that's normally how I'd work. I just kind of stand there. If, you, if, I, if I was to turn around, there'd be a coffee in my hand. Okay. Um, so that's where light gets a little more complicated. Okay. But all we're trying to do is shape and craft the light to convey a feeling. Okay. To sell a product, in my case, with most things is, is what the goal is there. I just noticed the Star Wars. It's funny to be at Pinewood Studios and you've got Star Wars um, just across there. So that concludes the first bit of my talk. We're going to go into a sort of practical demonstration. And before we actually do that, any questions about anything you've seen on the screen so far? I love the questions. I really, really do. Anything at all? Yes, sir. Yep. Flixel. Software's called Flixel. It's about the cinema graph that I showed. What did we use? We used um, something called Flixel. That's all. Sure. The question was, um, when I showed the cinema graph, what was the software that I used to create the cinema graph? It's actually a combination of uh, DaVinci Resolve and another piece of software called Flixel. Okay, that's fine. Anybody else? Oh, yep. Yeah. The question is, when I shot the BBC shoot um, and they said, don't use Flash, um, well, the BBC were fine about it. It was just the agency that wasn't cool about it. Okay, so the BBC were absolutely fine because I just said, guys, it's ridiculous. This is the dumbest thing ever. Um, so we just shot it with flash. That's fine. The agen agency just saw the end result and they didn't know the difference. But this is completely artificially lit. How did you light it? Beautifully. The question is, how did I light it? I lit it beautifully, okay? Um, okay, one of, the, one of the real secrets with making light look natural is to bounce the light. Okay, very rarely do you have the light hitting directly onto the subject. You want to bounce it. So along the left side here, what you don't see is several lights lined up along the wall, hitting the wall, and then filling back in through this side. And that gives us this lovely line through here. It blows out through there. It gives us a nice shape through there, nice gradation there, and that's how we lit it. So it's just a stack of lights along the wall. This is in the, um, what the, the gherkin, not the gherkin, the... London Mez building? City Hall, thank you. Yeah, cool. Right, any questions before we go into... Oh, do I use light meters? I own some really good light meters. Um, and I used to use light meters all the time, but these days not so much. Okay, Because fundamentally, a lot of the lights I work with, I know really, really well. And if we rent in bigger lights, um, I don't know, let's say, I, I don't know, 10K HMI, which is like a big cine style light, I've got a pretty good idea of the distance and what it's going to sort of do. Yep. Okay. Um, how the question is, how much detail is it within a brief and how do you decide your approach for the light? Okay. Well, typically speaking, the people that call me, they call me because they've usually worked with me before or they've seen something else that I like and they want something similar to that. Um, sometimes there's clients that I've worked with for years and years and they t trust me to interpret. They're saying, hey, do we want to do this and it's something like that? What do you reckon? Um, and then I will literally interpret whatever that happens to be and I usually get it more or less right, but that comes down to experience. Um, sometimes they'll say we want to have it, uh, we want it to have a hard metallic feel or something or rather like that. And then sometimes you'll have mood boards, or sometimes I might, pretty rare, 
do a bit of image research. Um, it, it's a to and fro. There's no, there's no, this is how you do it. You know, it's really, you have a discussion. Um, it's really important that we are able to articulate our, our thoughts and what we're visualizing when we're dealing with clients. Okay, because a lot of clients aren't great at that. So you kind of steer them a little bit. Yep. Correct, yep. No. No retouching here whatsoever. Question was around retouching. Okay, no retouching there. But sometimes we do retouch, of course. I'm not against it sort of thing. Gentleman here was before you. What do I use for color management? I don't worry about color management. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, x right and I'm a brand ambassador. And I'm, and I'm actually, I'm actually an x right master colorati, okay, which is kind of hilarious, actually. No, um, I'm really fussy about color and color management, okay? I'm a brand ambassador for BenQ, okay? So I, I use their monitors. I used to use a different brand before that. They said, we'd like to work with you. I said, send me a monitor, but if I think it's rubbish, I'll tell you, okay? They sent me a monitor. I was actually pleasantly surprised. So now I've got a few of them in the office. Um, we use x calibration devices to hardware calibrate, and this is a really important thing. You want to have a monitor that is calibratable through hardware. If you calibrate through software, let's say like a laptop screen or an iMac screen or something or other like that, you're getting an interpretation of the color. It's not a pure representation. That's how I would see it. So it's a little bit like, it's a difference between having a conversation directly with someone in their language or speaking through an interpreter, okay? You're gonna get a much richer dialogue by speaking directly with them. Okay, so in terms of color management, on most of our shoots, we will photograph one of these things, okay? And we'll set our white balance using one of these things as well. And it's critical, color management is so, so, so critical because on that converse shot you saw, we had the client complaining that the image was too dark on this, this is a true story. And I just said, well, when were your monitors calibrated last? Uh, don't know, I'll tell you what, Get your, um, you know, your head of, this is a big, big publisher. Get whoever is meant to do your IT stuff, get them to calibrate your monitors, and we'll have another discussion. Two days later, they phone me, they're saying, so sorry, Adrian, yes, you were right. Okay, it's really important that you know what you're putting out. You might not be able to control where it goes, but you need to know what it is that you're delivering. And for the people that are never gonna be commercial, you're just gonna print stuff, you're gonna save a bucket of money if you're correct on your screen because your prints are going to match up with what you're getting more or less okay it's gonna be a lot 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 closer okay does that i mean i'm going to talk a bit more about color management after we've had a sort of coffee break tea break sort of thing right yep oh yeah you must never do that yeah i was seeing who picks that up you get a free coffee at the break yeah <laughs> You shouldn't, you shouldn't touch these. It's a really, really, really good point. Um, you're absolutely right. You mustn't, you mustn't touch these. Yeah, well spotted, you bastard. Okay, right. <laughs> uh, let's have someone on this side of the room. Anyone? No one? Yeah, we will do a live, a live shoot in a sec. Uh, okay, we use Capture One um, software, which I'm going to shoot live into in a sec. Um, Adobe supports quite beautifully the color target if you wanted to get into profiling your cameras and doing things like that. Because we manage so many aspects of what it is that we're shooting in terms of the color of the light that's hitting what we're shooting and how we're doing things, and we use Capture One, we don't actually profile our cameras, but lots of people do, okay? I mean, Pete will be at the back if he, you know, want to sort of talk to him a little bit more about that, okay? So that's all good. So we do a live shoot now? Yeah, I think we should do a live shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's lots of people not asking questions, which is great. Okay, cool. So. I've got Amber here. Amber, can you come, come forward? We have the same therapist, so can you give her a round of applause, please? <laughs> so what we're going to do now is take some pictures of Amber using these small flash units. Now. I think it's really important from an integrity point of view. I, I don't go and shoot big campaigns on these things, okay? I simply don't, all right? That would be disingenuous. 
But if I have to do a portrait of someone in a hurry in an office or something or other like that, this is the type of kit that you would go for. Okay? Or if you have to do some, some really quick portrait of somebody outside, you're working by yourself, this is the type of thing that would, you would use. Okay? In fact, there's a multitude of places that you'd use this sort of thing. The purpose of today is, fingers crossed, okay, that we can create something that looks pretty good in this environment using gear that is actually accessible to everybody. Okay? It's not out of reach by any means. Okay? So I think what we're going to do is, to start with, let's look at building things up. Okay? Building up your light. But before we do that, there's a really, really important rule when you're about to photograph anything. It's critical, particularly if you're going to start lighting that subject. Does anyone know what that rule might be? And I mean it's a rule, and I don't like rules particularly, okay? But this is a rule, and it's a really, really good rule. Does anyone have any idea what is the very, very first thing you must do when you're photographing a car, a person, a horse, a landscape? What's the first thing you must do? Measure the ambient light? Wrong. Sorry? Grey card? Wrong. Charge your batteries? Wrong. You should have charged your batteries already. Sorry? Wine? <laughs> Why are you photographing it? No, wrong. 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 Don't even answer, you're wrong. Okay. Who said that? This man was right. He said composition. Put your hand up if you know what composition is. Nothing to do with music? Okay. Composition, absolutely bang on. When I started out in photography a few years ago, one of the first mistakes I made, I remember I was, I was sort of playing around at home and I was lighting some of my mum's um, kind of like these crystal things, okay, because they, they picked up the light and it was, it was really pretty and I was really sort of uh, emoted by this. And I had this really crazy, intricate lighting setup. I was like, oh, that looks so good, that looks so good. Got my camera out, but I couldn't actually see the subject because I had all the lights in the way. Okay? And it's a really, really, really common thing to do. So the first thing you would do is you would frame your subject. And I don't care what it is that you're shooting, okay? That's the first thing that you do. And if you haven't charged your batteries already, well, I mean, okay, how far do we go back with this? Buy a camera. No, go to a shop, earn a living. I mean, you know, but let's say you're on set, you arrive, okay? The first thing you want to be doing is framing your image. And whether you shoot video, like these guys are doing today of, of what's happening now, or you're shooting stills, it's the same thing. And whether you're shooting a vast landscape or an average looking person, okay? This is the first thing you must do. So you frame your shot up. That is critical. Okay? And if it's a landscape, you might frame it up, and then you sit there for several hours waiting for the light to be right. And if it's a car, for example, and you're doing something on location, and you've got the facilities to do so, you frame your shot, and then you might start to light whatever it is that you've framed up. Okay? Does that make sense? Because it's, it's such a common error. And I even see it with experienced pros on occasion. You will see it, and it's, it's, it's a bit like, you know, and what will happen is, they won't get it totally wrong, but what will happen is a light or a flag or something will be just where they don't want it to be, and then it changes everything, okay? Because lighting, as you're about to see, is quite literally a game of millimeters, okay? A little shift in your light, left or right or right or left, or whichever way you happen to be going with it, can change the nature and characteristic of the light, the quality of the light can shift just by moving it, okay? So let's play around now. I'm going to start with one light. This is a strip light. I always use grids, okay, on this sort of thing. So this is great because what this does is the light's still soft, but it's a little more directional because I don't want the light going all over the place, and the grid contains that light, okay? So instead of going through like that, it's going to come through and just hit amber. Okay, so let's start off in a really basic way. What I'll do so everyone can see is normally, 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 I would light 
Well, actually, I, you know, uh, it, it depends. Also, with lighting, I think this is really, really important as well. Learn how to light stuff in a really basic sort of way and then start breaking those rules. Okay? Learn how to light something in a very classical way. Okay? Look at some of the old artists, some of the painters. Okay? Look at various periods of time in art and the way that they would take light across the face. Learn to do all that stuff and then start to break the rules so you can understand what's going on. So I'm going to start with just one light. I actually want to have the light from the right-hand side. I know I just put it over here for a sec, but I'm going to just bring it around here. And I'm going to light a really basic three-quarter thing, just like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm operating the flash manually, okay, because... That's how I just do stuff. I do everything manually. I don't want a machine to decide for me <laughs> how a light level should be. Oh, sorry, someone's taking a picture. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ethics. Never touch a model. Okay. Right. So let's have a look at this now and see what we get. So we're going to do a very basic thing. We've just got one light over to the right. It's a little Nikon flash head. Super simple stuff. We've got the... Rogue flash modifier, softbox with a little grid on it. Not quite happy with the direction of that. Can anyone tell me, does light get harder as we move it away or softer as we move it away from the subject? Put your hand up if it gets softer as you move it away from the subject. As you move it away from the subject. Put your hand up if it gets softer as you move it towards the subject. You're all right. The other people, don't take it to heart. Okay, it's fine. Closer you have, the softer it will be. Okay, let's see. It looks like we've got a camera attached here now. Okay, so what we're doing is just going to literally just look like that. In fact, I'll make it even flatter on. So I'll come around. <laughs> All right, I'm going to lock it like that. That'll be fine. Okay, cool. Just put your chin up a bit for me. That's it, that's great. Beautiful. Three, two, one. Okay, and let's have a look. Okay, so this is super basic. Let me go full screen on this. Okay, let's try again. All right, that's cool. Twist your face towards me a bit. Come around this way a bit, Amber. That's it, that's lovely. Yep, eyes around here. That's it, that's lovely. It's great. Three, two, and one. So let's just have a look at this. This is just basic direction with the light. Oh, camera's become just connected. One second. Joys are shooting tethered. Here we go. And it's starting up again. Come on, connect. Tested all this before and it all, all worked absolutely fine. There we go. We're in. Okay, that's lovely. So let's have a look at that. That's lovely. Three, two, and one. Okay. So in comes our image. So... It's not so interesting, I don't think, from a from a quality sort of point of view. The way this light's looking. Okay, it's okay, but it's not it's not so interesting. Can anyone suggest how we might improve the light? Anybody? Add a second light. I want to stick with one light. Let's see what we can do with one light. Yep. What, just twist it around a little bit? Uh, okay. Anybody else? I mean, these are all valid things to say, okay? Let's not add a second light yet, because what I'm kind of curious about is to see what we can achieve with one light. So, we're going to move it. We're going to move the light, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it around, and I'm going to see what happens when we backlight a little bit. Okay, and I'll move it in a tiny bit closer. Come around a little bit more. Now, the interesting thing here is I haven't got a modelling light, so I'm kind of guessing a little bit, okay, in terms of what the quality and nature of that's going to be. But let's have a look and see how that works. Okay, and we've just got disconnected. I might have to change this cable over. Here we go. Yep, starting up. Sorry, guys. Great. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at that. I think... That's not quite right. I'll just twist that around a bit. Okay. We will start to build up and use more lights, but let's just see what we can get with one light at the moment. 
Great. Three, two, one. Okay. For me, that's starting to get more interesting. Okay? It really is. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece yet. Okay? We, remember, we're only taking, what, two, three pictures? Okay? But it's starting to get a little more interesting to my mind. I've gone probably too far with the light, so let's bring it around a little bit more. Could you twist so you're sideways? That's it. I've also marked on the floor a T, okay, with some tape for the model. Just a T, just you could have an X, or a, a Y, a Z, it doesn't really matter. We use this sort of tape, okay, because it just gives the model a reference point. It makes their life much, much easier. Go on. Uh, that Dave, the request to lose the house lights? I mean, what do you... Yeah, there's a lot coming in through the things. The other option would, would be we could close down the ambient light there. Yep. Oh, what power setting with my flash? I got no idea. I think about 164, something like that. 1 16th. Okay. Let's see if they're going to... We're going to lose the house lights, guys? Yeah, no worries. So what we'll do is we'll keep sort of playing around, and then you guys should better see the screen a little bit better in terms of what we're getting on there. Okay. But the flash settings are, yeah, like a 16th or something, or rather like that. Okay. Um, so let's have another look there. All right. So, yep, you're now sideways. So what we've done slightly now is just change the composition. It's lovely. Three, two, one. Because now the light's going to hit her in a different way. I don't know about you guys, but to me, that's starting to look lovely. Okay. It's starting to feel... There's, there's, a, there's a depth to it. There's a quality to it. Now I think what we can start to do is look at having another light. But before we do that, I'm going to drop the height. I've not rehearsed this. I know you're, you're thinking I'm really slick the way I'm doing all this sort of thing, but this is not rehearsed because I think it's really nice for you guys just to see the thought process and how we build it up as we build it up. So let's just see. I'm, you know, play with light. Have fun with it. Experiment with it. Okay, yeah, something like that. Let's just see what happens when we light from there. Let's see how that changes the characteristic of what we're getting. Yep, keep looking through that way. That's lovely. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay. Bit spooky. I don't like it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to where we were, but that's fine. Okay. That's just part of playing around. But just before I go back to where we were, try twisting your face around towards me. Yep, keep your, keep your shoulders that way. Okay. Twist your face back around this way and put your chin down a touch for me. That's it, that's it. Yeah, just like that. And eyes at me. Three, two, one. I'm just curious, okay? Now, that to me is starting to look lovely, okay? All we did was just change the direction of the face a little bit, okay? There's so much subtlety and so much nuance to light it's amazing. The exposure looks a little bit down. What we can do is let's we can pick up the ISO a bit here. Okay. And you know what? I might even sort of pursue this a little bit further and see what we get. So bring the face around towards me and eyes around about there. Yep, something like that. Three, two, and one. Now I'd probably be helping myself if I had a tripod with me. Okay. Um, but I came on my motorcycle and I did that to prove a point. You can travel really, really light. My laptop, these lights, my camera, all came with me on the motorcycle. Now, because I've upped the ISO, we're getting a little bit of fill actually from this screen, okay? And a little bit from the daylight, just filling in through here now, okay? So that's a one-stop difference, but it feels very, very, very different. But I think now what we could do is introduce a second light, okay? Now, I could choose to put that on the background or I could choose to put it on our subject, Amber. Anyone have a suggestion as to where we should put it? I don't mind. Any, anyone? Okay, because you've all rushed with the responses. Yeah, go on. Okay, on her or on the background? Light on the background. Anyone else think light on the background or... Or light on her? This is great. This is, God, imagine, imagine having to try and light stuff by committee. I don't know. You know. Should we do it this way? Should we do it that way? I don't know. So I think. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of light behind, and I'm going to create a little bit of form in through here. Okay? Just for you to note, at the moment, I'm shooting on a tungsten color balance in the camera. 
okay? And I've got the light here with a gel over it, an orange gel, okay? It's what's called a full CTO, O for orange, okay? Color temperature orange. And what we're doing is I'm making that the same color as these lights here, okay? The light I'm going to introduce here also has a CTO on it, okay? So we're keeping in tune. It might not be a full CTO, so this might be a slightly cooler light. Let me have a look here. Nope, this is a full, this is a full CTO. So we're going to be keeping the same look and feel with the color. But let's just see if we just have a little bit of light just sort of skimming just on the edge there. And from a power point of view, I'm on 164. Okay, So it's just a little bit of light. Let's see what it does in terms of the feeling that we've got here. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, something like that. That's lovely. Three, two, and a one. Oh, camera's not. Okay. <laughs> uh. Should always work with an assistant. What max ISO would I shoot at? That would be dependent entirely upon the camera um, that I was shooting on. The question is, what was what is the maximum ISO I would shoot on? That would all depend on the camera. Okay. At the moment, I don't want a lot of the ambient light coming in. I want the flash to do the power, so I'm at 200 ISO. Okay. At uh, two hundredth of a second. Okay. I don't want the light in this room particularly. I want my light. Okay. Because I want to control what is happening. Okay. It's a great question. We shot something recently with this camera, um, and I think we took it up to like 1600 ISO. Okay, we still lit, but we wanted we we're in a bar, and we actually wanted the ambience of the bar, so we wanted some of the house lights in the shot as well. So then we we, we rolled it up. I mean, it's so easy today with digital cameras. Once upon a time, we'd carry three different film stocks and different Hasselblad backs. Okay, now you just change it as you go. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Okay, right. So let's have a look and see what we've got now. And we're tethered still. That's lovely. Three, two, and a one. Okay, so it should be a little ping of light. Yeah, there we go. So you see now we've just got this little ping of light. But you know what I'd like to do, because I'm going to talk about colour after the break, is I'd quite like this to be black and white. And black and white loves... Who, put your hand up if you like black and white. Okay. Put your hand up if you've heard of an American dude called Ansel Adams. Okay, I did my thesis on Ansel Adams. Put your hand up if you know that Ansel Adams trained as a concert pianist. Yeah. And as we said right at the beginning of the talk, I'm talking about a philosophical approach. Ansel Adams approached photography in the same way that he approached music. For Ansel Adams, creating the negative was writing the score or writing the music. The print itself was the performance. Okay? So he would, when he would be out in the field, and he'd be looking at a scene, and he'd be determining what he was going to capture from that scene and how he was going to interpret the scene, he's thinking about how he's going to print it. And the way he captured the negatives and then subsequently processed the negatives was all determined by his pre-visualization of that end print. Okay? So right now, I've got some ideas in my mind as to where I want to go with this, and just looking at it, I just thought, oh, let's go with black and white, because something that black and white loves... Hi, Dave. Dave's just waving to me. Hi, Dave. Five minutes? Five minutes left? Okay. So, let's play around with black and white now, because we're going to do some colour after the break, because black and white loves shadow. It loves deep shadow, and it creates a different life with the image. So, let's just have a look here, and take this down to... Let's have a look. Exposure. There we go. I'll do it a really simple way. Just like that. Let's see where we can take this before we stop for the break. Okay. Bring that. Yep, keep that way. That's it. And then twist the face around a little bit more. Yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, I th I, 164, I think. No, 164th, and that's 116, I think. Okay, that's all right. Pay attention. Stop taking pictures and pay attention. Okay. Right, here we go. All right, let's have a look at that. That's fine. Okay, and then looking through there. That's nice. Beautiful. Three, two, and one. Okay. Oh, cable came out again. Let's try again. 
Guys, after the break, maybe if I have someone up here just, just managing this so I can... There we go. We're connected now. Let's see, see how that works. Okay, right, let's try it again. That's beautiful. Three, two, and one. Okay. So, same sort of thing. Um, focusing on the wrong eye, what I'll do is in the next one I'll focus on this eye, and I'd like a little bit of sort of eye contact from our module, okay? Um, and then the other thing as well is she's got lovely hair, so I'd like to see a little bit of that, but also I'm going to change the direction of the hair light on the left, so it's coming from behind a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just going to put that through there, and I'm going to up the power on this a bit. Okay, that's fine to... Okay, let's have a look there. Uh. Hey, Adam. Adam. Actually, you know what? I, I can't actually work out how to up the power on the light, so I'm just going to move it in closer and we'll see what happens like that. Okay. Adam, can you adjust that for me, mate? Can you bring the power up? Okay, right, so let's have a look now. So that's coming through there. What I want you to do is, can I just move your hair? Is that okay? Yep. Okay, and then just lift that shoulder up a little bit more and twist away from me. Okay, and then come back around. So you're looking back over, yep, like that. Okay. That's it. And then something like there. That's cool. And then, yep, and then back at me like that. And I'll bring this in a little bit closer. I can't, okay, because I'm a bit stupid, I can't actually increase the power of this light. So what I'm doing instead is literally just bringing it in closer because you've got something really beautiful called the inverse square law. Who knows what the inverse square law is? Who can tell me? Half the distance, four times the power, okay? Or half the distance and a quarter of the power, okay? Inverse square law. It's really, really important because what can happen is you can be looking at something, oh, I haven't got enough power for this. All you've got to do is move your light a little bit and suddenly you've got enough power, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just bringing this light a little bit closer, okay? Right, so looking this way, that's nice. That's good. Beautiful. Three, two, and we connected. And one. Let's see how let's see how that goes now. Let's focus on the back eye. Cool. Three, two, and one. Let's see how that goes. That's better. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much shadow on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I don't like the light at the top of the hair, so just before we break the thing, I'm literally just going to tilt this down a little bit. Just like that, because I, I want it lower, okay? I think it's going to be a stronger image there, so you've got the light working that way compositionally. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this a little bit. Like this. Come across a bit. Now, if I can get reasonable results out of these lights, and I'm not massively familiar with them, imagine what you guys could do with a bit of practice with these. Okay? So let's have a look at that now. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Just twist the face a bit that way. That's it. And twist around from the body so you're looking over your shoulder more. Go, go. Keep moving your feet around as well, please. Yeah, that's it. And then looking back over your shoulder. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then towards me. Yep, chin down a bit more. That's lovely. Let's have a look at that. Focus on the back eye. Three, two, and one. Let's have a look at that. I'm hoping there's a little bit more light at the bottom. And there is. That feels too strong. I'm going to back up there a little bit. And I think the light here is quite nice. I think the light's a bit too bright, so I'm going to go down to 200 ISO. Okay. And I'm going to just back this up a bit. Like there. So I'm going down to, sorry, 100 from 200. So we'll get a little bit more subtle with the light. That's it, that's lovely. Three, two, and one. Let's have a look at that. That's more like it. Just do one more where I focus on the back eye. Actually, we'll push this back a bit more. Maybe after the break, if I can have a volunteer to be moving the lights for me, that'd be awesome. Um, okay, that's cool. And then something like that. That's great. Three, two, and one. Let's have a look at that. Backlight looks like it might not have fired, or I've missed the subject altogether. Okay, let's, yeah, let's try that again. Nice, three, two, and one. Cool, that should be better. 
That's cool. And one more with the eye on focus. That's it. Lovely. Twist the face a bit more that way. That's it. And then the eyes at me. That's it. That's lovely. Three, two, and one. Let's have a look at that. Lovely. Two small lights. Average looking model. Okay. And I'd never say it to a face. You're beautiful, darling. <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. And the reason this works is because we've got a lot of shadow. And black and white loves shadow. So this is within reach of everybody here, what I'm doing right now. Okay? This is not rehearsed, as you can tell. Okay? It's quite literally me just thinking, oh, let's try a bit of this and a bit of that. Okay? After the break, we're going to explore color and how we sort of manage color on set and what we do about color, okay? But I think that's not a bad start at all. And also, please note, that is straight out of camera. This is before we give this any love whatsoever. But it's the subtlety of the light that's making it something. And if you go away with one thing today, and that's learning about subtlety and nuance of light, then I'll feel really, really pleased, okay? So... 10, 11.32, that's end of part one. We're going to pick it up after you've all had refreshments. Okay, so thank you.